Okay, so this lesson is from the Ascent Autodesk Revit 2017 MEP Fundamentals. And I'm going to be talking about the difference between um, drafting views and detail views. So I'm going to be opening up the MEP Elementary School Detailing. Um, and I am on page 15-17 in the textbook. Okay, now if you, um, I've already created the drafting view. I'm going to open it up so you can look at it. Now, the way a drafting view works is a drafting view is basically a 2D drawing, kind of like an AutoCAD drawing. Um, I just want to take a look at a couple things here. So this is the quarter inch aerial. So these are all 2D elements and they have absolutely no relationship whatsoever with the Revit model. And the idea of drafting views is that they can be used across projects. Because if I have a fire damper or a head threshold or a threshold detail or a head detail for a door and I use that same door in more than one project, I can use the detail in more than one project. So they're basically AutoCAD drawings, except they're made in, in, in Revit, of course. And um, they have, if the model updates, um, then the drafting view doesn't change at all. It, it remains static. So to create a drafting view, you go to the view ribbon and you create select drafting view and then you give it a name. So I'll call this fire damper two. Okay. Um, and say okay. And notice all I get is a blank window, uh, which is uh, kind of disconcerting for a lot of people because they don't know why do I have a blank window. And the way the blank window is, is it basically um, lets you insert your detail view, detail components. So if you go to the annotate ribbon, you can click on detail lines and you can draw a couple of lines. So I'm going to draw a couple of thin lines here. Okay, and those are going to be eight inches apart. And I want that to um, be the quarter inch, linear quarter inch. Okay, so um, I want this to be eight inches. Okay, and um, I can adjust my lines so they're not so big. Okay. Those are the thin lines. Then if I want to make the thick lines, the wide lines, I'll come over here. There's the wide line. Okay. And right. And I'm going to say that's linear quarter inch. Okay. So notice that I've got my lines, I'm adding them in, and these are just 2D objects. All right. And if I want to um, add um, a rectangle, I certainly can do that. And I'll use the wide lines still. So there's my wide lines. And and I'm doing like a little like that for the fire damper. Okay, and then um, Revit comes with this library of detail components. So if you come over here and notice, you can see all these components. So um, that ASIC angle shape came from here and then you just tell it what size you want. So we wanted the L um, three by two by quarter inch. So you can 
come and find this L3 by 2 by quarter inch. Now we already have it loaded and then we can just use our um, space bar to, to rotate it. Okay. To place it. Okay. And we can use the um, break line, which should be in here right here. Okay. And again, I can use my space bar. Dad. Break line just to make it look a little bit cleaner. And um you can do a filled region if you want. Um To create your to create your drafting view, to to create your drafting view, and then how do you use that drafting view? Well, if you come over here, notice here's my drafting view right here, fire damper detail. I'm going to come back over to the floor plan. I'm going to um, insert a fire damper. So I'm going to go to component, place a component. I'm going to load the family, and whoops. Not a detail, sorry. And I've got a fire damper round fa Revit family, and I'm just going to um, bring it in. And um, uh, just place it. And I'm just going to place it like right there, just to have it. Okay, so there's my fire damper. All right, so now I have a fire damper in my, in my model, so I want to create a detail for it. I can come over here. I can say I want to reference another view. I want to reference the fire damper detail view, and I'm going to uh, call it out right there. So then... If I want to go to that view, I could click right here and say go to view and it'll take me right to the fire damper view that I've already set up. Okay. And if I wanted to use that fire damper detail view in another project, I would just right click on it and um, say I want to save to a new file. And it would ask me where I'm going to save it, and I'll just go ahead and save it here. Okay. All right. And it's saved. And then if I start a new project, okay. And um, I bring in that same fire damper family. Place it. There it is. Okay. And I want to do another call out to it. I could um, come over and I can say insert from file, insert views from file, and come over and locate that detail that I created before so I don't have to reinvent the wheel. That's the whole point is no reinventing the wheel. And it's been inserted. So now, um, if I go to my project browser, that view is now now exists before it didn't. I don't want the project browser to take up that much space, so 
I'm moving it over. Okay, so I've got that view now. So again, I can come over and I can create a callout back over to that view, referencing that drafting view that I inserted, which is kind of cool. So go to the view, there it is. Okay, so that's a 2D view though. And you're saying, wait a minute, that's not really what I want. What I want is something that's going to um, show my model. So um, I'm going to open up the elementary school architecture file. Let's say we want to do a detailed view of this window. Well, we can do a call out for this window, right? Okay. And if I say go to view, Notice it's putting it as a call-out view. All right. This view is a detail view, and it is related to the model. So if I go back to the floor plan where this window is, all right, and I go to Window, and I load Family, and I go to Windows, and let's say I select um, a ca double casement window, Right, that's oh forty eight by thirty six. Then I select this window and I say I want this not to be the four by four adjustable, I want this to be the double casement window. Okay. Now notice that the window changed here. Now if I come over to the callout, notice that it updated. There's a relationship. So if you change it in the model, it changes in the detail view. Well, that said, um, if I wanted to add detail elements to this view, I can still do that. So let's say this is one inch, okay? So I can come over to annotate and um, I can add insulation. Okay. Okay. I can add um, uh, detail components. Um, like some rough cut lumber. Show the studs. Okay. And um, I want to uncheck the crop view region. And if I wanted to add a break line. I can do that. So this is a combination of 2D and 3D elements. So that's the difference between a detail view and a drafting view. And I hope that helps you understand what's going on there. wish my properties and project browser would behave. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. Thank you very much.